Hey everyone, Dan Johnston here. I'm the Jack of All Ministries, and today I want to talk to you guys just a little bit about sound treatment. So the reason I'm making this video is if you watched my last video, you know I said that there are a lot of misunderstandings between the relationship between sound treatment and soundproofing. I've spent quite a bit of time on the soundproofing subreddits and stuff like that talking about soundproofing and trying to help people out. And a lot of times the questions will be something like, hey, my husband's home theater is really loud, my son plays his video games loud, my neighbors are loud, whatever. What do I need to do to soundproof? Can I go get some of those soundproofing panels and will that help? And usually I have to tell them that the answer is no because sound panels are actually not usually for soundproofing. Uh, they are for sound treatment. And so I want to talk a little bit about what sound treatment actually is as opposed to what I talked about in my last video, which is what soundproofing actually is. And so I wanted to start off just by explaining a little bit about the dynamics of sound and what it is we want to accomplish in a room. If you want a room to sound to be soundproof, that means you want to stop sound from getting from one place to another. Usually a sound source like a speaker or a drum set or whatever, you want to stop that from getting to your ears or your neighbor's ears. And so we put barriers in between there. But sound treatment is what we do if we want a, sound, a room to actually sound good while you are in there. And there's a few reasons why you might want to do that. But first I want to um, articulate that this video is not all encompassing. I'm not going to go into the details of room modes or anything like that. I just want to talk about the basics of sound treatment, specifically what we use materials in the room for. So what we want to do is we want our room to sound rad. Okay. This will be an easy way to remember the things that we're playing with in a room to try to make it sound better. We're going to deal with reflections. We're going to deal with absorption. And we're going to deal with diffusion. Okay. Those are kind of the, the basic things that we are going to deal with in terms of trying to make a room sound better. Now, basically the idea of reflections is what happens in a room. Actually in this room, you can probably hear them right now. You'll probably hear that when I clap, the sound doesn't stop as soon as my hands touch. It's not a quick sound that just ends. There's a little bit of decay on there. You can hear it kind of ring out a little bit, if you will. That's because I'm in an old school building where I have solid brick walls all the way around me. The sound is actually reflecting in here. And what that is, is if you take a look, if this was a room and say you have a, a listening position in the room, right? This guy has some pretty big ears. All right. This is his listening position. Now, listening position um, doesn't have to only be one thing. Like for example, you could be in a sanctuary in a church and have multiple listening positions throughout the room because that's where the people are. Or you might be in something like this where you're sitting in a home theater and you're just wanting the one seat to be a, to sound good. The other thing you have to consider is if you're in a recording studio, a microphone is also a listening position because that microphone is doing the same thing your ears are doing, essentially taking a physical, um, vibration in the room and turning it into electrical energy, which is sound. So a, you know, you can have multiple listening positions. You can have one, it could be a microphone or it could be somebody sitting in the room. So we also are going to have to talk about having a sound source in the room. In this case, we're just going to draw, you know, a little bit of a, you know, one speaker centered in the room. Now a sound source could be a drum set or anything you're recording, a voice, whatever the case might be. So if you have this and it's making sound, right? <clears throat> these sounds are coming out of the speaker towards the listener. The first sound they're going to hear is the most direct one, right? A straight line is the shortest, you know, way to get between two points. So that's what you're going to hear first. But the problem is speakers don't shoot sound in only one direction. See sound is going to go off in many different directions. Now what happens though, is when it hits a wall, the sound may bounce back. Okay. So what we run into is that this, while this might be, maybe this is like a five foot distance, this bounce to coming to your ear might be something more like a seven foot distance. And then this might be something more like a 12 foot distance. Now sound moves at a fixed rate. It's like 700 something miles an hour. I'm not exactly sure. But what happens is it's going to take longer for this one to get to you 
than this one is going to take to get to you. And so what that does is you're hearing a scattered set of reflections. Now, what that sounds like to the human ear often is reverb. The sound kind of blurs out because you're hearing the reflections later than you're hearing the initial sound. Now, sometimes this bouncing might take a really long time. Like if you're in a cave, a sound might go a really long distance without any reflections and then hit a wall and come back. So there might be a long gap in time where you don't hear a reflection and then suddenly you hear one. We hear that as an echo, echo, echo right? A echo, delay. Echo. But basically it's the same principle whether there's a bunch of them happening quickly or there are some of them that are taking longer. There's a longer decay time. And so reflections are something that we have to have in a room. Now reflections can be a good thing, all right? And we'll get to that just in a second. Because the next thing I want to talk about is absorption. This is how we stop this process from happening. If you imagine for a second that sound is like a tennis ball and I threw it in this room and it hit the wall and it bounced off, okay? That's a reflection. But if we put, say, like a pillow and I threw that tennis ball at the pillow, it's going to lose its energy and it's going to fall to the floor before it bounces back. Okay, so that's kind of the same principle we use when we try to stop sound in a room from bouncing around. We want it to sound good. Okay, so these absorbent materials like the studio foam or sound panels or something like that, that's what we use them for, is to stop that bouncing of the sound. That's why we use absorbent materials. So <clears throat> what we need to understand about that though is that sound waves are not all created equal. When we get a lower pitch frequency, when you start getting down below 100 cycles, those sounds become much more difficult to actually absorb. And so we have to use specialized materials like maybe like a rock wool safe and sound because it's a little bit denser or you might even use activated carbon or something like that. But the point is, is that once you start getting down into 50, 40, 30 cycles, those sound waves are almost impossible to completely control. And so we do what we can by thickening up our absorbent material and doing what we can. But the problem is, is that sometimes these materials absorb at different rates and so we have high pitched frequencies that get fully absorbed and low pitched frequencies that only get partially absorbed at best, which makes the room sound a little muddier, sound a little bit lower, um, and that doesn't always sound as good. And so sometimes we will team up a, a reflection and absorption by say getting absorbent material to pick up the base, but then putting a thin sheet of like hard plastic or even sometimes metal on the outside of that absorbent material so that the high pitch frequencies will then start to bounce around and resonate in the room again. So you get a little bit of highs, you get a little bit of lows, uh, and then not too much in the middle. And some people think that that sounds better. Another thing that we need to know is that sometimes these reflections can create an opposite problem, okay? When something is reflecting too much, it's like, ah, oh, I'm hearing that sound too much, there's too much going on. But sometimes reflection can actually cause there to be not enough sound. And the reason why is there's something called phase canceling. See, a sound wave, when it's actually going, if you imagine this is neutral for a second, a sound wave may actually look something kind of like that, where it's traveling at us like this into our ears, okay? But the problem is, <clears throat> sometimes when the sound is delayed, it can be delayed just the right amount so that this bottom peak may actually shift over in delay to here. And so what happens with that is our sound waves actually start to look like this. We hear one version of the sound, the pink way. We hear the other version of the sound, the blue way. And you might look at that and think, oh, okay, so we're gonna hear pink and then we're gonna hear blue. But that's not actually the way that it works. What happens with phase canceling is if you imagine for a second, if I'm pushing down with five pounds of force, but you're pushing against me with five pounds of force, we don't get to hear both, or we don't see the responses of both five pounds of force going against each other. What actually happens is nothing. Okay, if I push five, you push five, it sits in the middle and nothing actually happens. Well, that's also what happens with sound. We need it to vibrate and enter into our ears in a way where it's going back and forth on the wave. But if they're counteracting each other evenly, the sound actually, our ear can't process it and that's called phase cancellation. So if we get too much reflection in a room where it's bouncing in and there's phase cancellation, you actually won't hear the sound fully at all. And that's actually not a good thing either. So we want some absorption to prevent that from happening. Now it's important to understand that we do want a little bit of reflection in a room. It sounds unnatural when a room is completely dead. 
right? We are designed to live in a world where we respond to the sounds around us. We can hear foot, uh, footsteps coming up behind us. We can hear a car coming. So when we're sitting in a room and there is no sound at all, it's a little bit unnerving and it just sounds weird. So even the best studios in the world will have some reflection in the room because you want the room to be controlled, but not overly absorbent inside the room. So the last thing I want to talk to you about is this idea of diffusion, okay? And what diffusion is, is rather than trying to absorb and stop the sound, you actually redirect where you want the sound to go. So imagine for a second that in here you can see that I've, I've added these lines, these blue lines, where the sound is pretty well uniform coming against the wall, right? Sound all goes at one time, it bounces off the wall and all comes back at one time. And that actually creates an image in your head that the room is a certain size, okay? But what you can do is if you make an uneven surface on your uh, wall that the sound is gonna be reflecting off of, what actually happens is while this sound wave will get this far in half a second, well this sound wave is only gonna come back this far. So it actually encourages there to be a different response from the sound waves on the wall. What can also happen is if a sound is coming here at an angle, this one's gonna bounce off, while this one coming here is gonna actually come and bounce back. And this one here is gonna deflect into the wall. This one's gonna get trapped. So basically when you're diffusing, what you're doing is you're making sounds go off in all different directions at different times, which actually encourages things like reverb sounding in your ears, which actually can make a room sound bigger. It can make it sound fuller, uh, which can be a really good thing if you want your room to sound that way. So basically whenever you're treating a room, you wanna play with all three of these things, reflections, absorption, and diffusion in order to make your room sound better. I hope that this is helpful to help you realize that sound absorption panels and stuff like that is actually uh, has a very good use to make a room sound good, but it's not necessarily going to make your room quieter or the room next to you. So I hope that this video was helpful for you. If it was, I'd appreciate if you consider liking and subscribing because this is the kind of stuff that I like to tackle. And with that, I hope that you have a great day and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.